some time ago, or actually a very long time ago, we had a look at Noise Blockers E Loop X B12 XPS. And yes, they definitely needed a better naming scheme, but the conclusion was a very strong uh, meh. I wasn't particularly drawn to the all see through design, and the performance was also quite behind many other fans, probably due to the fact that those were like very slow versions. Needless to say, that the guys who sent me the fans were not very happy with the video. Not that they complained, they just uh, never answered my mails again, so uh, yeah, <laughs> damn. But ignoring my not-so-positive encounter, I was, and I still am, very drawn to the original E-Loop in white version. So for today, we are going to take a look at those noise blocker E-Loop B12P, the ones which will hopefully perform hell of a lot better. And I really hope they do, because they are going to go into my editing rig, so uh, this is kind of in my best interest here. Anyway, once unboxed from the... Ew. Th those fans are originally from 2012, or that's what I believed based on, on that copyright here. But uh, apparently they were produced in 2012, hence the extreme discoloration between the boxes of those uh, B12s and the B14s that I have that are from like 2015, I believe. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a lot. Now, jokes aside, I believe this can actually be very important, because this would mean that the fans were sitting for a decade in some warehouse, and I'm very unsure how negatively 10 years of doing nothing can impact bearings. I, I don't know. I don't know if anybody tested that, but uh, yeah, just keep that in mind in case that the product performs weirdly or makes weird sounds. Anyway, once unboxed, we will find the noise blocker fans themselves, as well as the same very handy goodie bag that we already saw on the RGB version. First off, we have a 20cm and a 50cm PVM extension. This is basically mandatory, because the fan follows a similar approach to what Lockyer has been doing all of this time, with that mini 1cm long PVM header that comes out of the fan. So you can either make the cable 20cm long or 50cm meter long or daisy chain the whole thing and make it 70. For the installation itself, it's a bit different from what we are used to. Included, we will get a bunch of long radiator screws, some nuts and rubber washers. To install them, we would press the rubber washers into the holes of the frame on the fan, where we would usually put like fan screws, and then we would position the fan wherever we want, we would shove that long radiator type of screw through it, and then we would secure it on the other side using the nut. Just keep in mind that there will be a bit of screw sticking out, because apparently they were just producing a single screw for both the 140mm version, which is a bit thicker, and this one, so here we will have quite a bit of protruding screw. Coming back to the fan itself, nowadays it exists in two different colored versions, a black and a white one. Then from there, there are a bunch of numbered subversions, rocking a 3-pin header and spinning at different speeds. And then there are two PVM versions, the B12PS at 1500 RPM and a B12P at 2000 RPM, which is the one we are talking about today. The fan wing design on all of them looks really weird. I already talked quite a bit about this on the E-Loop X review, because it's basically the same fan, just with RGB, but to make it short, Black Noise, the company behind all of this, put in a very ton of work to create an exceptionally looking bionics-infused anti-vortex design. The idea behind all of this is that the usual fan blades, which do have endpoints, are creating vortexes at their ends, causing turbulences, thus reducing the performance and maybe even creating additional noise. The ring around the E-Loop fan is however designed in a way that it is not creating any endpoint, as each of them is just ending inside the same ring that goes all around the fan. Additionally to that, we have a bunch of indentations here and there, a bit of mini optimization edges, you know, the kind of stuff that is supposed to make the product better, which for example also Noxia does on, on every single fan they have, they do tiny bit of optimizations, slight edges, and they believe it will give them 0.1% more performance, and this is basically the same thing. How this will then perform in the end, we will see. However, the ring that I believe they came up with first has seen many reusages over the years, Arctic P12 ARGB being a perfect example. The blade material itself is also quite special. Instead of the usual PBT that 99% of fans out there are using, the blades of an E-loop are made of something called Bayer Makrolon copyright. 
I wasn't able to find out a lot about it, but it seems like it's a very special type of polycarbonate which is better like at heat resistance Why being lighter. And being lighter seems to be a very important point to them because they do talk a fair bit about the fan using up to 30% less energy, which very honestly, from my side, I don't care. Like a fan uses what, like 5 watts? Like a 140mm monster? Why would I care? On the spec sheet, these B12Ps are spinning at up to 2000 RPM whilst pushing around 78 CFM at 2.24 mm of H2O. But to group all of this together, what Black Noise tried to achieve with those fans is them being more efficient whilst using less energy if you equalize performance output compared to other fans. Or a lot better if you crank them up. So let's see if they succeeded. On our usual test setup, the Noise Blocker ELU B12 P managed to keep the CPU at 46 degrees C above ambient. That's 8 degrees C above their ELU X B12 X PS ARGB fan. That's a way too long name. Now I believe this is an excellent result. Sure, there are a bunch of fans that outperform those quite a bit, but they did manage to get into the upper third while they are a decade old. Keep in mind, a Nokia NFA 12X25 came out 6 years ago, the Silent Ring 3s came out in like 2016 and the T30 is like a year old. And that being said, I still have no idea if sitting in a warehouse for 10 years had any negative impact on the fan that I am testing right now, so maybe 10 years ago it did perform a bit better, I just don't know. So yeah, considering the average lifespan of something new in this industry can be like counted in minutes, this is not a bad result. Over on the noise to performance graph, it continues to look interesting. Here the noise blocker managed to squeeze in right into the big group of high performance fans. And even their higher efficiency got a bit of a stage time here. While it never was really able to outperform an NFA 12X25 in any way, it did manage to be on the second spot for a very brief time. So performance wise, those are really fine, especially considering their age. Plus, keep in mind that bearings might have become a problem and a bit louder over the years. We are just unable to verify that, but that's still a possibility. Okay, with that being said, I do want to point out that those fans are kind of developed although they are more optimized for radiator usages than for a case fan usage. And as we explained in our how we benchmark fans video, we do have kind of a hybrid test where the static pressure does get a bit more attention than the just pure case fan would, would usually use. But at the same time, we've also seen in the best radiator fan video that the position can switch once you have enough obstruction present. So, with that said, for the next round of Best Radiator Fans Part 2, those will definitely be on the list and there we will see how these puppies will perform on top of a radiator. As far as general usage goes, they are in the upper third for max performance, but once the noise efficiency kicks in, they manage to score along the best like a Fantex C30 for example. On the design side, this is just different. They are all white with a black frame and a touch of grey on those rubber pieces on each corner. The color of, of white is also very special. It's not see-through at all, it is glossy as hell, but in my opinion it looks just interesting. I like them, that's why I bought them for myself, I want to use them. But uh, I understand that not everybody likes this set of color. However, something very interesting is that the material is supposed to have something that they just call anti-dust technology. I am completely unaware what this really is and I will start to find out if this really works once I jam them into my working rig for a few months, but considering their glossy color, I really hope that the dust just doesn't stick to them. I even don't know how they would do that, but uh, if that works, perfectly fine for me. On a short could have been better part, I believe they could have made a better job with the cable that is coming out on the fan side. Not only does it have rainbow cables, which you will see most likely, and that does kind of annoy me, but on the back side you can see the, the cable going inside the motor for half the fan, which I will see the three of the fans from the back all the time, which already now annoys me, and I sincerely hope that if they ever make another version of this, just you know, make block this. Why the hell am I supposed to see this? I, I do not need to see that. Just, you know, put a cover on it. It's that easy. Okay, this should be it for the Black Noise Noise Blocker ELU B12P. Wow, that's a long name.
If you want to keep watching, have a look at Alltech on the Scion Wing 4 Pros. I'm just going to say that I love them and that should explain how the video ends. On a side note, we now also have channel memberships. So if you are looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to buy a warehouse full of dust so that it can once and for all settle if anti-dust technology really exists and works. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.